O Canada Conversations are a creation of IOM, made available under the Creative Commons 3.0 IGO. Please refer to the text of the audiobook for the copyright mark and the full legal code. Funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Financé par Immigration, Refugees et Citoyenneté Canada. O Canada Conversations, Dialogue No. 13. Transportation in Canada. The following dialogue is related to Unit 9, Transportation, from the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. For more information, refer to the following units of the Canadian Orientation Abroad Participant Workbook. 9.1. Transportation in Canada. 9.2. Cost of Transportation. In this dialogue, the Canadian Orientation Abroad Facilitator explains types of transport in Canada and their cost. It is the last Canadian Orientation Abroad session before Obasi, Sadia and Ali's departure to Canada. They bid farewell to one another. The Canadian Orientation Abroad Facilitator, Ali, Sadia, Obasi and other refugees are in the Canadian Orientation Abroad session room. A childminder takes Sadia's and Obasi's children to the childminding room until the session is over. The facilitator tells the attendees they can talk amongst themselves for a few minutes before the Canadian Orientation Abroad session begins. Hi, Obasi. Can you believe today is our last session before departing to Canada? Hello, Sadia. Yes, time has gone by so fast. How are you and your family? Are your wife and the newborn baby okay? Thanks for asking. They are well and ready to depart. Oh, I see. I am glad to hear that. We will be departing all together on the same day. Yes, me too. Well, I will be going to Winnipeg with my daughter and son. And Ali is going to Montreal. Oh, yes, that is right. I am going to Winnipeg, too. We are going to the same city. I hope we all get to meet up again, including Ali. Do you know what today's session is about? It is about transportation in Canada. We can ask if we can visit Ali after we are settled in Canada. That is a good idea. The Canadian Orientation Abroad Facilitator starts the session. Welcome, everyone. Today, we will talk about transportation in Canada. Canada is a big country, and there are different ways of traveling. What kind of transportation do you use where you are living now? I came to this class by bus. I used to take trains to see my grandparents, who lived far away. I heard that Canada is so big. Many people take an airplane just to travel inside the country. It is true. Canada is a large country. Let us talk about long-distance travel first. There are four modes of transport for long-distance travel in Canada. Airplane, intercity bus, train, and ferry. Who can tell me which one is the most expensive and which is the least expensive? Airplane tickets are probably expensive. Maybe the intercity bus is cheap. That is correct. Airplane is usually the most expensive way to travel long distance. All main cities in Canada have airports. The least expensive way to travel between cities is the intercity bus. But Canada is very large, so travel can be very long due to distances. It is often the only way of traveling to smaller towns if you do not have a car. I have never been on a ferry before. In coastal areas such as British Columbia and the Atlantic region, these boats are a common mode of transportation. Many ferries transport passengers and vehicles. I have been on trains in my own country. 
That is good. The train network extends across the country, but not all towns and cities are connected. Also, here is a tip. When you are planning to buy train tickets, it is less expensive to buy tickets in advance. I see. That is good to know. I will write it down in my workbook. Let us go over short distance travel. If you do not have your own car, then you have three modes to travel short distances. Taxi, public transportation, or ride-sharing applications. I know about taxis. I am glad Canada has taxis because I like to take them when I am in a rush. Yes, but you should know that taxis in Canada are expensive. All cities and towns have one or more taxi companies. Drivers have an official identification to show they are licensed by the city. And they have automatic meters to calculate the cost of your trip. The rates are fixed and it cannot be negotiated. I see. What would be a less expensive way for a short distance ride? There are ride sharing applications. This technology connects riders and drivers through a mobile phone application. The travel is often less expensive than a taxi, but they are not regulated by the government. You should be extra safe when using a ride sharing application. What about public transportation? There are buses in Canada as well? Yes. All cities and most towns in Canada have public transportation. Every place is different. Some cities will have a bus, subway, light rail or streetcar, or maybe all of them. I would like to have my own car because I have a big family. Would that be possible? Buying a car is expensive. If you would like to buy one, consider your options carefully and do research before you make a decision. There are many additional expenses that come with owning one, such as insurance, fuel, parking, and repairs. What about motorcycles? Motorcycles use very little fuel but can only be used for a few months of the year because of winter weather. Plus, a special license is needed to drive one. I did not think about that. Do people use bicycles in Canada? It is good exercise, and we do not have to worry about parking. That is right. You will not need a license to ride a bicycle. Bicycles are a healthy and affordable way of getting around cities and towns. They are permitted on most streets, and there are special lanes just for bicycles. But wearing a helmet is strongly recommended. Stay safe. I have a friend, Ali, who is going to Montreal. He is sitting over there. I hope I can visit him in the future after I arrive and settle into my community. How can I visit him? That is exciting. Do you know which city you are destined to go to? I am going to Winnipeg, Manitoba. I am resettling under the private sponsorship of Refugees Program, and Winnipeg is where my sponsor is. I see. It would be a long-distance trip to go to Montreal from Winnipeg. I would have to take a long distance mode of transportation then. You are correct. You can take airplanes. It would be the fastest way. I see. What about trains and intercity buses? Yes, you can take either of them as well. You will have to check if your city or town is connected if you want to take trains. Intercity buses are also an option. It could be the only way of getting there if your friend lives in a small town. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. No problem. I hope you get to meet your friend.
There is a lot to know about transportation in Canada. Yes, there is. When you get to Canada, you can ask your government-funded organization or sponsors about ways to get around in your community. The Canadian Orientation Abroad session is over. As people get up and leave the Canadian Orientation Abroad session room, Sadia and Obasi talk more. Obasi? Yes? We are going to Winnipeg together. My daughter Miriam and your son Michael got to know each other well. I know. They have become such good friends through these Canadian Orientation Abroad sessions. We will keep in touch once we get to Winnipeg. Is Ali going on the same plane with us? Hmm, I am not sure, but he's probably leaving on the same day. I heard he was very excited too. Anyway, I will see you at the airport. Take care. Thank you. End of dialogue unit.